From Kern Government Television, welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting, originating from the County Administrative Center located at 1115 Truxton Avenue, Bakersfield, California. Kern County's vision is to create and maintain a customer-centered county government designed to garner the confidence, support, and trust of the people we serve. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Welcome to the 2 p.m. session of the Kern County Board of Supervisors. Uh, Madam Clerk, would the board will reconvene. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Supervisor Gleason. Here. Supervisor Scrivener. Here. Supervisor Maggard. Here. Supervisor Couch. Here. Supervisor Perez. Silence. Mr. Nations, could you please give us a report on uh, items that are uh, that were take that took place during closed session? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The board did meet in closed session on items 46, 48, and 49. From this morning's agenda, there are no reportable actions taken in any of those. <clears throat> Item 47 was postponed until after today's meeting, and the board will be adjourning to that closed session following the close of business this afternoon. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. We will deal with our uh, first this afternoon items that are on our consent calendar. Consent items are considered to be uh, routine in nature by staff and therefore non-controversial. They are indicated on the agenda with a CA preceding the item, above the item, and uh, staff has suggested what those items are. I'll, in a moment, I will turn to the public to see if any member of the public has a question about any item on consent, and then I will return to the board for uh, their deliberation over the consent items, and if a member of the board wants to pull an item, they can do so if, if it's... Uh, Necessary. So are there any members of the, uh, let me go first through with you what those items on consent are. Beginning on page two of the afternoon agenda, there are items three and four. On page three, items five through seven. On page four, all the items eight through 15. On page five, all the items 16 through 22. On page six, all the items 23 through 27. On page seven, items 28 through 30. And then items 32 through 35 and on page eight, items 36 through 41. Are there any members of the public that have a question about any item that's on consent? I don't see anyone, so I'll return to the board. Colleagues, do you, uh, is there a motion to proceed with a consent calendar for its approval, or is there an item you'd like to discuss? So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you, supervisors. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved, four ayes, one absent. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. Are there any members of the public that would like to make a comment to us this afternoon about any item that is not otherwise on our agenda this afternoon? Good afternoon, sir. Could you please give us your name for the record? Uh, my name is Cecilia Barrera. I'm and, a representative and, and of- And we, we offer an opportunity for two minutes for an unscheduled item to be discussed, so. Right. Mr. Barrera, is that what you said, Barrera? Yes, Cecilia Barrera. Cecilia? Yes. Thank you. And uh, I'm a representative of the company Waste Management. I uh, have been working for waste management for a little over seven years in Kings County. About four months ago, I was uh, assigned to, to Kern County. As for Kern County, we do business in the city of uh, California City, city of Ridgecrest, city of Tehachapi, Stalling Springs, and uh, McKittrick. Uh, my job as a, as a community representative uh, is to make myself available and accessible to all of you and to our customers. Um, not only to provide a, the best possible service that we can provide, but to also understand and listen to the needs of our community, as I believe we are a great resource to, to the county. With that, I hope to personally meet all of you in the near future. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, you can call me on my cell phone at 559-309-7688, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public wish to make comment? We'll return to the board then. Any more members of the board like to make a comment or make a report to us this afternoon? Don't see anyone. So let's go on then to item number 31, and that is a report on legislative advocacy in the fiscal year 2018-19. Uh, Mr. Alsop, this is through the CEO's office. Are you going to speak first or will Mr. Brown? I'm going to have uh, Mr. Brown of the... CAO's office speak on this item. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas Brown, good afternoon, Mr. Brown. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the item before you is a legislative update on the county's advocacy for 
increase revenue for local programs in the fiscal year 2018-19 state budget. In April, your board adopted the county's annual legislative platform, which ident identifies Kern's legislative priorities and guides the county administrative office in recommending and pursuing legislative actions. At its core, the platform promotes local autonomy, policy that supports and promotes our local economy and core industries, and providing full state and federal funding for mandated services, including adjustments that reflect the current cost of operating our local programs. The legislative wins for our local programs in the 2018-19 the state budget focus on five key areas. The first area relates to child support funding. Your board joined a robust coalition in February and advocated for equitable child support program funding for Kern and about nine other historically underfunded counties. Our lobbying efforts resulted in an incremental change as the state budget does include $3 million in additional appropriations from the state general fund for all county child support programs. Our office remains optimistic that future budgets will provide additional funding increases and we will continue to advocate for an equitable funding methodology for Kern County. Although the dollar amount is not as high as we'd hoped for, we believe the stage has been set for constructive dialogue with the state and we hope for continued improvement for our program. The second area relates to human services funding. The county continues uh, to advocate for consistent funding levels that support our local health and human services programs. As such, an additional $23.5 million is allocated from the state general fund for the CalWORKs single allocation in fiscal year 2018-19. This is in addition to the $55.8 million in temporary assistance for needy families or TANF funding that was included in the governor's May revision. With this additional investment, the overall funding for this single allocation is level with prior year funding. The county advocated for this restoration in partnership with the California State Association of Counties and the County Welfare Directors Association. And we're pleased to see this additional funding included in the final budget. In addition to the CalWORK single allocation restoration, the state budget also includes a 10% increase, roughly $90 million from the state general fund, to the CalWORK's maximum aid payment amounts. The added appropriations will help increase maximum aid payments up to 50% of the federal po poverty level. This change will help significantly alleviate deep childhood poverty throughout the state. <clears throat> Recognizing that Kern typically experiences above average poverty levels, your board supported increasing the CalWORKs grant levels, affirming your support to protect more children from the worst harms of chronically unmet basic needs. The third area relates to aging and adult services funding. Recent funding changes to the in-home supportive services or IHSS program enacted by the state have compelled the county to continue its advocacy for incremental and responsible cost shifts to counties. The bulk of the first year cost shifts were mitigated and the budget included includes $15.4 million in state general fund for county IHS administrative costs in fiscal year 2018-19. An additional $24 million is also budgeted for county IHS, IHSS administration. These funds will ensure that adequate resources are available to support the actual costs of administering the IHSS program for the upcoming fiscal year. The fourth area relates to homelessness funding. Recognizing that so many of our departments serve the local homeless population each day, your board has reaffirmed its steadfast support and advocacy for alleviating homelessness in Kern County. The state budget includes $500 million in one-time general fund assistance to local governments in their immediate efforts to help homeless Californians. The funding will be allocated through emergency aid block grants. Uh, the first $350 million will be dedicated to local continuums of care based on their 2017 point in time or PIT homeless count. Kern's 2017 PIT count was 810. As a result, preliminary estimates suggest that Kern and the metropolitan Bakersfield area will qualify for roughly $2.6 million from this funding source. The remaining $150 million uh, will be dedicated to communities in each continuum of care with a population of over 300,000. The metropolitan Bakersfield area meets this criteria. However, an estimate of how much the area could receive from this particular block grant is still forthcoming. In addition to one-time general fund spending, the No Place Like Home program will be placed on the November ballot. If approved by voters, the program would authorize up to $140 million in Mental Health Services Act or MHSA funding to be diverted in fiscal year 1819 to jumpstart the program 
and allow the issuance of up to $2 billion in bonds beginning in, in 2019 to build permanent supportive housing units for the state's homeless population. And the fifth and final area relates to funding for Kern Medical. Recognizing the prevalence and severity of Valley Fever here in Kern County, your board collaborated with Kern Medical to lobby the state legislature and the governor to include funding for further research of the disease. The CAO is pleased to report that the fiscal year 2018-19 state budget includes $3 million that may be allocated to the Kern County Hospital Authority to support Valley Fever research. The additional funding will help provide the best patient care available and promote research that includes epidemiology, clinical drug development, prevention, immunology, and immunizations. Kern County remains committed to advocating on behalf of the families affected by Valley Fever and will continue our efforts in hopes of one day finding a cure. And finally, as part of the budget process, the Kern County Hospital Authority suffered a significant setback as a result of legislation included in the Employment Budget Trailer Bill, otherwise known as SB 866. Per the Hospital Authority's 2014 enabling legislation, Kern Medical was required to enroll new employees in the Kern County Employees Retirement Association, or KSERA, for a period of 24 months after the effective date of, of transfer of the medical center from the county to the authority. That 24 month period was set to expire on June 30, 2018, and the intent was for the hospital and SEIU to negotiate a new MOU before the expiration date. The enabling legislation also authorized the hospital to establish an alternative or supplemental retirement system or arrangement. Despite the language in the enabling legislation, SB 866 compels Kern Medical to enroll all new employees in KSERA and will have various financial and strategic implications for our safety net hospital. Most notably, eliminating any possibility for an alternative retirement plan, such as a 401k, which typically offers greater employee control and portability compared to a defined benefit plan like KSERA, creates a strategic limitation that could impact the hospital's ability to recruit top talent. This issue is particularly relevant in, industry, in, in an industry that experiences high levels of turnover like healthcare. Similarly, the change will inevitably increase the unfunded liability for the hospital authority, adding to Kern Medical's current $330 million obligation, which equates to approximately 80, 86% of the authority's fiscal year 2018-19 budget by comparison. What's most dismaying about this legislative change is that it was facilitated through what amounts to a procedural loophole in the budget process without any involvement or input from local stakeholders. Budget trailer bills are meant to be used as a legislative vehicle in implementing the state budget, not meddling in our lo local labor negotiations that have virtually nothing to do with the budget process. In effect, the state legislature actively deprived local leadership of an opportunity to fairly negotiate labor matters. Imposing a one-sided directive in favor of one party over another before good faith negotiations were allowed to proceed is unjust and contrary to the transparency that we expect in our democracy. Despite our best efforts to oppose the bill, which included dozens of direct correspondence with all members of the Senate and Assembly Budget Committees and the Senate and Assembly leadership beginning on May 30th, an in-person meeting with Governor Brown's Secretary of Legislative Affairs on June 6th, and direct testimony in opposition to the trailer bill language at the Senate Budget Committee hearing on June 18th. The language was ultimately included in the final budget trailer bill and signed into law by the governor on June 27th. Because the change to the hospital authority did not have a direct appropriation tied to it, it was impossible for the governor to apply a line item veto. The CAO regrets to inform your board of this negative turn of events but remains proud of the myriad of other accomplishments your department heads and our office accomplished over the last several months. This concludes staff's prepared comments. We're available for any questions your board may have. The re recommended action is for this item to, for this item is a receive and file. Thank you. Colleagues, do you have any questions for uh, Thomas Brown or the CAO before I go to the public? Do any members of the public wish to make comment, <coughs> excuse me, to us this afternoon with regard to item number 31? Not seeing one, we'll turn to the board. Colleagues? Supervisor Gleason. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I got three questions for you. First one is the, the PIT count, the PIT count in the homeless. Uh, my understanding is that PIT counts vary dramatically based on the season, the time of year in which that PIT count was taken. 
Do you know when? And, and so they build a funding based on a pit count taken in January. That's half the homeless population that we'll have in May. Could you talk a minute about the pit count and is, is there ways to affect change or getting the right number? So we'll need to coordinate with the state on a, on a correct pit count. Um, the 2017 count, to my understanding, uh, was completed. I'm not sure what month it was completed, but um, it, it, that number was already included and we'll have to work with our homeless coordinator to see if, if uh, there's any way that we can change that. Because I know there were some, some concerns about uh, the count here right. for Kern County. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate all the work on a sub, a finding funding. This morning's meeting, I clumsily was trying to ask the simple question, have we done all we can to mitigate the additional costs that are being rammed down our throat by the state of California in terms of law enforcement and um, AB 109 and Prop 47 and all the things that affect all our budgets? Have we exhausted all opportunities to remedy those cost reimbursements? That's a very broad question, right. and I, I, don't, I don't have a specific answer for you. Do you look into that? We will. Do are that. we missing something that that would help us out significantly? We will. We will turn over every stone we can to find every dollar we can for sure. Last question is: Is AB 866? SB 866. SB 866. That. What does that mean for Kern County? I mean, I understand what you were saying about the health authority and the and the hospital, but what does it mean for us? Well, the financial well-being of the, of the medical center is directly, it, it's still tied to, to the county of Kern because if they get into any kind of financial hardship, your board could always uh, rescind the hospital authority and re, retake the Kern Medical Center under, under the county's authority. So by proxy, it has implications for the county. You, when you're, while you were talking about it, you said no stakeholders were involved in the conversation. I thought SEIU was involved in those conversations. S SEIU is not a stakeholder as far as our side of the okay. negotiations okay. is what I understand. I didn't understand what you meant by stakeholder. Sure. So my question is, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Gleason. Any other members of the board have a question? <coughs> yeah. Supervisor Couch. Thank you. I, I Sorry, go ahead. I just want a little clarity. Senate Bill 866, tell me what that, was so, that the bill that created the health, uh, the hospital authority? Or no, is that the trailer bill? Th that's the trailer bill. So eventually... But it was... But it was I'm, I'm, I'm just going to keep interrupting you. Um, <laughs> was it a Senate bill? <laughs> so when, it, when the budget process goes, goes forward, um, there's a reconciliation period between the Senate's version of the budget and the Assembly's version of the budget. And so to reconcile those differences, both the Senate and the Assembly had their versions. Of, of trailer bill language for that okay. specific uh, item, but eventually they were reconciled under one, which was SB 866. What was the assembly bill's number? Uh, it was 1232, but that's off the top of my head. And who, can you, do you know who sponsored each of the, both the assembly bill and the Senate bill? The assembly bill, I'm not sure. Uh, the Senate bill, again, it's a trailer bill, so there, there are a myriad of, of sponsors for each, each of the items under the... Because the each bill, bill has a multiple items. Correct. Or can. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments by board members? <clears throat> Recommended action is to receive and file. Thank Some you for the it. report. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved, four ayes, one absent. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. Uh, we have another matter to deal with in closed session yet this afternoon, so I would entertain, that concludes the public portion of our meeting this afternoon. I would entertain a motion to adjourn to closed session. So moved. Thank you, Supervisor Scrivener, without objection, so ordered. We will next see you on July 23rd at 1 p.m. For, when's the next public session in this room? Mr. Chairman, uh, the board will meet in closed session uh, Monday, July 23rd at 1 p.m. The next meeting where the public would be involved would be Monday, July 23rd at 6 p.m. For, for the board to hear public input on the recommended um, budget. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll see you then. Good job, Kathy. You nailed, you nailed it. it.